Good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy Jay Stein and the stock market coming at you with a little post market live stream that nobody watches. But hey, if you're paying attention, uh, hop in the live stream. I'd love to chat. It's always fun, uh, even though it hasn't really happened yet. Anyways, all right, guys, we have a lot to cover. Um, some things came out today. So first, we'll start with the uh, obvious. Uh, President Biden uh, announced today that he is going to raise uh, capital gains taxes from 20% to 39%. And even, depending on your tax bracket, it could go up 43%. Now, these are people that make, you know, a million dollars and up. But my question is, we all saw this coming. And and I guess maybe that was the corporate taxes, uh, which are at 28 percent um, or will be going to 28 um, percent. I thought this was already priced into the market. So I was a little bit taken that the Dow dropped 321 points at the close. And I really wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Luckily, um, just this morning, I ended up taking some profits out of my S&P portfolio. So um, that was good. I'm glad I did that. But, um, you know, they're, they're calling this, this money, this $1.9 trillion in the COVID uh, relief package. But we all know that's not where this is going. You know, we're, we're, we're this infrastructure plan. Well, the money's not going there. It's not. Um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of where else it's going, but it, it's it's just not. Um, there's a myriad of other places this, this money is making it to, and it's not in large part in any way, shape, or form COVID relief to families and individuals and for the people that actually need it. Now, maybe there's a hat trick. Maybe all of a sudden, uh, you know, next week when he implements this, uh, you know, all of a sudden small businesses, uh, landowners that rent apartments, all that money goes to them and to the regular people as well that are struggling to get by because they don't have a job and they still have bills to pay. So hopefully President Biden, you know, follows through with this. But it just, I don't know. I'm not holding my breath, but I'm breathing slowly. I'll put it to you that way. So um, between the corporate tax rate and then the uh, capital gains tax rate, hopefully it makes, it makes a difference. That's all I can say. I'm keeping an eye on it. Now, the markets obviously dropped significantly upon this news. And I mean, it was across the board, the Dow, the S&P, and I believe it, it even drug some of the, uh, what I would consider to be uh, not necessarily uh, stocks that would correlate with the broader markets, um, such as Coinbase, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so the, the markets all along, uh, they all took a hit together. Um, now, when it comes to oil, Oil didn't do much, uh, dropped about a half a percent. So it's sitting at 61, 63, holding that same kind of range that it's been in. Hopefully it does. That's that's an okay price point. Again, if anything happens globally, uh, supply disruption or some sort of conflict in the Middle East, we're going to see that go higher. God willing, nothing like that happens. And you know, oil prices remain the same because I don't want $5 a gallon gas at the pump. Well, more importantly, I don't want war to break out and anybody to get hurt. You know, that's that's the key. Um, gold, gold was pretty much, you know, I mean, it put on half a percent. And honestly, uh, the overall precious metals did not do good. Um Therefore, the mining companies didn't do very good either. Nothing bad, just definitely not good. Um, now, as far as crypto is concerned, okay, crypto has been in a, how do you say, a little bit of a goalie. 
you know, a goalie, which I, I don't like that phrasing. It basically means it's freaking going down. At any rate, it looked like it was stabilizing, so I felt that it would be a prudent time to uh, buy some more of a uh, of an altcoin that I'm a fan of, and it was a great move right up until everything went down. And I can't help but wonder if you know Mr. Trump. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Trump. Uh, President Biden's comments may have had something to do with that. Although that connection, I, I'm just not making it. Um, maybe crypto just needs to cool off a little bit more. Um, but I thought I saw a bottom. I really did. I thought I thought I saw support, and uh, I was wrong. I was definitely wrong. I mean, Bitcoin dropped down to 52, pretty much 52 and a half thousand. As of right now, it's like almost four percent down. Again. Crypto is very volatile, so you almost kind of have to, you know, grab your cojones or if you're a lady, I don't know what the equation is. I mean, I could make up uh, a couple different uh, phrases that the ladies could use, but it would be inappropriate and I don't want to offend any ladies that are watching. Anyways, so um, you got to stomach that volatility. Just the question is, how much can you take? Now, Stansberry Research, if you're not subscribed to Stansberry Research, I highly suggest you do. Uh, her, the main host is Daniela Cabone, and she is awesome. She has some of the best guests out there. You're talking about uh, Max Kaiser. You're talking about Gerald Salente. Well, she just did a debate uh, between Frank uh, Guista and uh, what's his name? Tony, Tony Sellers. And basically, it was gold versus Bitcoin, and it was a phenomenal debate. So I highly suggest you get on there and you check it out because it was it was a brilliant uh, a brilliant uh, debate. Anyways, so uh, gold, gold, like I said, uh, traded about half a percent. Miners, which leads us to crypto that I already discussed, uh, took a major hit. Coinbase in particular, I mentioned it earlier, and I was really hoping it would keep its legs, and it, it didn't. Uh, it closed down almost 6%, which sucks uh, for anybody that averaged in on it, like I did. You know, I was all thinking I was being all prudent, you know, responsible, averaging in. No, screw that. I am down in that. So if you're down in it, hey, you know what? Don't sweat it. Um, I believe that crypto is going to come back. It just needs to find a floor. And once it does, we can see a nice little run on that and altcoins, which should send uh, Coinbase much higher. I believe that's why I bought it. Anyways, um, so with the market drops, um, the 10 year being what it is, basically, we're looking at the 10 year um, at where are you? The 10 year is sitting at about 154, 1554. Totally cool. I can totally live with it. Uh, the dollar index, slightly up, but not much. Um, and then in terms of ETFs, the only ones that really performed good were um, none. So uh, pretty much any of your lever, or, yeah, inverse ETFs did good. Um, in terms of positive yield off of positive gaining stocks, you you did not do good. Um, so that's that. I'd love to give you some specifics, but that's just how it was. Pretty much the broader market. Um, however, the VIX is staying under 20, uh, which is a good thing. Now, even though we have a market drop like we did today, and it seems a little scary, and it's based on some political stuff, so long as that VIX stays below 20 that's that's like that's the red alarm once it starts getting above 20 and the markets really start fluctuating um that's when we need to start getting concerned and really it has to do with the 10 year and the dollar so um if we start seeing a strong dollar and the 10 year yield starts getting above uh my benchmark is one eight 
and we start seeing that VIX start spiking 20, 25, 30, um, that's going to be a cause of concern for me. And the S&P actually hit one of my key levels. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are because it's proprietary to my trading strategy. But nonetheless, on the S&P, it tagged right on that uh, next support level, and it looks like it's bouncing off of it. Hopefully, that's the case. Hopefully, we can shrug off this President Biden uh, tax increase deal because, again, the Federal Reserve is going to keep printing money. So long as that's the case, our yields stay the same, the dollar stays weaker, there is no reason why this market should go down. It shouldn't. Now, should it go straight up parabolically? No, absolutely not. We have to take breathers. It has to have some form of fluctuation. Whereas crypto, yeah, there, there's there's fluctuations, all right, and we're witnessing one right now. I'm okay with it right this very second. Just please recover crypto. Please recover Bitcoin. Lift it up. You know, do do something. You know, that would make me feel better. Um, so let's look for that. Let's look for that nice reversal on the broader markets and crypto. And, you know, hopefully they kind of trade a little symbiotic. So when people start getting back into the markets, they're, you know, not as afraid to spend more money on other assets such as crypto. And um, that, that'll that be the uh, name of the game. Now, uh, stocks that I've been watching. All right. So we have Cell Science, which is uh, the ticker CVM. Look, guys, I don't like the way it's set up. Um, yeah, it made a nice little run, and that's all fine and well. But if you look at it on a yearly chart, you'll see. If you look at candles, you'll see how it spiked, but then it dropped right back down. And it's holding at around 24, uh, about 24 bucks. And all that's all fine and well. But when it sets up like that, and then it made a run today, dropped right back down. Yeah, it's 21% up, sure. But that setup, I just don't like because they don't have any positive press coming out. They just don't. It, 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 there's nothing going on. So, and don't get mad at me if you're into this stock. I don't want to offend anybody. It looks like it could easily be a pump and then, you know, drop back down a little bit, you know. Uh, to where it's no longer a prudent invest a pump and dump. I'm just saying it might be a pump and dump. Um, now, Oxygen. All right, look. Here's the deal. I was a little bit skeptical of it, and I'll explain why. Um, this thing. Okay, so it's a clinical stage pharmaceutical company, and they're developing a vaccine for uh, COVID. Uh, so basically they're doing their trials over in India and they're getting really good results. But the way I see it is that India, their phase, their trials, uh, are a lot less regulated than they are here in the United States. What I did not factor is that all of these vaccines we're using over here, Moderna, uh, J and J Pfizer, all of these are being used under the Emergency Authorization Act. So if they have this drug, this vaccine, that shows promising trials in India, they could fast track it, basically clear it here by using the Emergency Authorization Act, and then uh, probably get one of the bigger companies, even though they're in talks with a company that's already ready to manufacture and market, uh, to the point of sale, but ultimately they'll they'll probably outsource it to one of the bigger companies here, um, simply to uh, you know get to maintain that stock that stock price. I mean, some company in India, you know, they're not going to make as much money unless you know until basically you get you know American company to buy into it. So um, it, it is a buyout. Potential, no doubt. Uh, their drug, uh, it's Covaxin. Um, that's the drug they're talking about. Now, the other issue, though, is that it's a saturated market. You have the big dogs. You have the major uh, pharmaceutical uh, vaccine developers out there. And they're already showing pretty much the same rates of, I don't like to use this word, uh, 
So I use this one. They're showing the same rates of effectiveness. Okay. Yeah. Efficacy. It has the same rate of efficacy. No, it's being effective. Anyway, so these big pharmaceutical companies already have the same rates of efficacy as the company uh, uh, that that they're making this Covaxin. Um, so Ocugen. Ocugen's a small company trying to break into a major market that already has drugs that are already pretty similar to what they have. Now, with that said, I'm not going to lie. Yesterday, I was very skeptical of it, but today it made another nice little run. I wouldn't mind seeing a pullback, but with the right pullback and the right technical setup, given what they are, could be a nice little buy. My issue with it yesterday was it hit the uh, the 20 day moving average and got hung up right at it. And then today it broke through it hit the 50-day moving average, and blew through that. So what I want to see is I want to see that pullback, and I want to see it come back down and basically find support on that 50-day moving average. So long as it does that and there's no real news coming out, um, then it might be a buyout uh, you know, contender. Now, the fact that you know it's run up you know, these 20% here, 20% there, um, I mean, would it close? Uh, you know, actually, yeah, holy crap, 42%. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. That is incredible. So to buy it this high, in my opinion, it's just that's that's too rich for my blood, especially when on a technical, um, a technical basis, it's due for a pullback. You know, it can't continue to hit 40, 50, 60, um, you know, different different days of it doing that. So anyways, um, I'm looking for a pullback. If it holds the 50, I'll probably buy it. Um, and then let's see what happens. Probably get a buyout or commercialization, uh, manufacturing and marketing rights here in the United States. Anyways, I know this is getting long. So Nicola, I covered it earlier. Um, basically American, um, American Travel Center and Nikola have partnered up. They're going to start building out hydrogen fuel pump or fuel stations at all of their truck stops and or gas stations that are throughout the country in between every major city. They're wonderful stores. They got restaurants attached to them. Uh, drive time versus the amount of time they have to wait and sleep after, say, 10 hours, they have to wait three hours and the fueling time all works out. Beautiful setup. Love the company. Anyways, guys, um, I appreciate you watching. Uh, check it out later if I do another video. Um, also, guys, please subscribe. Please thumbs up and uh, ring the bell notification so you know when I'm going to go live. Anyways, guys, uh, if I don't talk to you later today, I'll check you and hopefully we have a wonderful Friday. Much love, everybody. Talk to you later.